So, welcome, welcome Internet, welcome uh, America, and uh, I guess I guess non-Americans as well. If uh, if you're tuned in, uh, you're 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 allowed. Um, this is uh, this is the Cranks podcast. It's our first episode. It may even be before our first episode. This this may be our, in fact our, our beta episode. So this is episode zero <laughs> of the Cranks. Uh, I am I am Richard Rushfield, author Richard Rushfield, editor of HitFix.com. Here from the HitFix uh, glamorous world headquarters, you see behind me, uh, and I'm joined by my friends and fellow cranks, author Stacy Grenrock Woods, and author Neil Pollock. Uh, how are you, my 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 friend, my author friends? Cranky. I'm I'm extremely cranky. You, is it, well, let let's let's just set up the parameters of of what this is we're doing here. Uh, everybody. Uh, everybody knows uh, the internet these days. It is a time for enthusiasts. It is a time when we are supporting the arts and of storytelling and of personal narratives and experiences. And uh, it, it is it is not a time where we feel the need to for for harsh criticism, but uh, but but to, to to share our enthusiasms. It's a time of liking. Uh, and this is this is another kind of podcast. That's that's not that. Uh, we we like things uh, a little bit less to not at all, and uh, that was a perspective uh, we 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 thought uh, we should share with this internet. Uh, so so let's uh, so so we'll get into that. But first of all, yes, as I as I was saying, uh, Stacy, uh, yeah. how how are you? Oh, I'm cranky, of course. Yeah, how's how's your week been? Well, you know, <laughs> a lot of terrible things. I mean, I guess we just all want to know why it all sucks, right? Yeah, it's, I mean, if if there is a why, I it's just uh, that it does is, uh, is 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 important to say to start with. Well, it absolutely sucks. Um, I don't like. Everybody's been liking everything all week. I've been looking at everybody's vacation photos and even the ones from last year that they've posted again. It's really nice, and I like it all. And I like uh, I like corporations. I like to tell Starbucks how much I like them. And uh, uh, no, I don't like to. You did an experiment once. You wrote a piece. I did an experiment where I liked every single thing that came across. And you got you really got into the spirit of the. Age. I really did. I liked pictures of like people's dead fathers. I wasn't the only one who liked these things. And uh, how did it feel to be like? It felt it? like it felt like a a bunch of terrible drugs all at once. Waking up in the middle of the night, like trying to remember what what kind of things I said I liked during the day, like. Oh, like a little picture, like a picture of a scone. I really like that. I put out so much. It 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 just made more hate come in. It just it let it. I let I let out a lot of like, and I made room for a lot more hate to come in. So. Well, you you poison the word world with your positivity, with your fake positivity yeah. there. Yeah, and it did it didn't know. It thought I was part of it, and yeah. well, it still doesn't know. Uh, author Neil Pollock, we we find you in uh, in Austin, Texas today. Uh, headed to your urologist, I believe. Uh, well, that's you know that is uh, that's true. But uh, as a middle aged Jew, it, it it's uh, required that I do that. But really, my my crankiness this week doesn't necessarily come from my uh, my my uh, genitalia, but uh, more from uh, my back. Uh, usual the usual back problems. I Tell test me about drive, this. Well, I test drive cars for uh, semi living. And I had this Dodge Challenger, um, and uh, with a, it's called a Scat Pack, which you would think with that name would make me means it would make you poop in the car, but it, that's not the the point. Is is that there's a, bu there's a button you press, and it causes the car to shake violently um, while you're driving it. It's kind of like a special effect. And so I had that thing engaged, and I pulled out of a stoplight, and the car fishtailed so so crazily that literally my pelvis slid. Um, off of my sacrum, I could feel it move, kind of like a typewriter, like a typewriter return. And so, I, so, so I, 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 last night I slept with my legs propped up on a, on like a bolster and some towels and stuff. And so, so I'm, I'm a little, I'm a little cranky about that as well but as the, all the other stuff. It's going to be a positive review, though. <laughs> Thumbs up for. I, yeah, yeah. I mean, it has to be. You know, it has to be because it's a car review, and no other kind of review is allowed. Uh, I. Uh... 
I, uh, since you asked, uh, I, I, I've got some tooth problems. Oh, I've, yeah? Uh, I, I, I have, I've had this toothache now uh, in the back here for, um, it's hard to measure exactly, but three to five years now is uh, it, it, in that range. Um, I would suggest you go to... Constantly? Well, no, hey, that's that's the thing. Uh, not constantly, because every time I, I'm about to break down and go to the dentist, yeah. uh, then it feels a little better. Oh, but so you've never been to the dentist about it? What, oh, so, God, no. So what? a lot of a lot of people, uh, a lot of people. When you tell people that you have a tooth, that you have a toothache, yeah. In this modern world, everybody is throwing their dentists in your yeah, face. Yeah, everybody, yeah. Everybody's like dentist this, dentist that. Go get it checked out. Go. Uh, and the other side of it is, uh, what if I don't go to the dentist? And and no one can really prove to me that the world will end if I don't. So until someone can. Uh, it, 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 it seems like a, it seems like a lot of fuss to just go getting in a car and putting on your shoes and your socks and yeah driving all the way to a dentist. driving all the way over there where they're gonna make you sit in a chair where are you gonna park and where are you gonna park yeah where? you're gonna end up probably you don't know how you're gonna be there you're probably gonna end up paying the maximum for parking you know what elevators are like at dentist's office have you ever been in an elevator at a dentist's office it's awful. They're in these medical buildings. Where yeah, it's, it's filled with old people. Old people who have yeah. all kinds of things wrong with them. You're See, probably. I, I, I have to disagree. They're depressing. I, I'm going to disagree because I enjoy. Oh, come on! Oh, come on! I enjoy, on. I enjoy oh. being part of the medical. You like you do. like doctors saying things to you. You want them to tell you, you know. I just, I just feel like a good it, discount like, or whatever. like they know how you should run your life better than you do. I just like to yeah. think. I, I just I just like the I, I kind of like the feeling of being caught in a in a vast medical bureaucracy. I just I, it just somehow it yeah, you it, would <laughs> it, it would it fulfills me in a way you that you would that is the sickest thing I've ever heard. I just I, I just you just I just you just have to embrace it. That well, is the I, worst I, sickness to want to be around doctors. <laughs> I don't. Want I will I will say this. Uh, you go to doctor's office. Um, usually you've got to wait a long, long time before they yeah, see you. Yeah, fill out paperwork. And well, you, after you fill out the paperwork, and and so and you sit down, and you don't really want to see them. So you're there in the waiting room. It's comfortable. You probably bought your book or your your phone, Candy Crush or something. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and That's you know, the best you're, part, the waiting. You're not, you're yeah, you're not you're not anxious for the wait to end. It's not like you want to get on your plane and go because getting on the plane means a tooth is going to be drilled. Yeah. So uh, that's a wonderful time sitting in the in the in the office there waiting. I, I, that's an experience I pay for. I just I, I don't know. I guess I kind of enjoy the debasement of it all, you know, and and the just the, just the the status, you know, having my status immediately drop to that of nothing. <laughs> but uh, when the tooth hurts, what's that like? Well, it's 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 painful, but that's the thing about it. It's you know. You can only torture someone in the same way for so long until you just you just sort of become numb to it, and 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 you know my body can overcome that kind of that kind of pain, and then it takes a few weeks for the tooth to figure out some other kind of pain to try to trick me into going to the dentist. I feel I feel like you win. You will win. Not I, the I, tooth. You, no, the the tooth will win. But no. I, I, no, I disagree. But I I I, I, I um. The, I'm drinking giant soda here. What the hell more can I do? The what? tooth always wins. Your, your bad health habits. Win. That's your. I'd say don't drink any diet soda. You li eliminate it. diet soda from your life. So no I problems. Drink. I should drink uh, non-diet soda. Water. But, I, I think that um, this cranky disagreement <laughs> about, about about dentists, though, I think this, this sets up things pretty well. We did. Uh, we Are you did. trying to segue, Neil? <laughs> I was kind of tired of the dentist talk. Yeah, that was well done. I, have, uh, I was just getting into it, but okay. We're we're, we're gonna have for people who are interested in more of this. Uh, Stacy and I are gonna do record a special bonus episode of this podcast about dentists. So they can download for uh, for for four dollars on your uh, local uh, YouTube four? app. <laughs> four dollars. Yeah. Uh, so so see that. Uh, but for the main for the main uh, viewership, uh, let's. So we had uh, we had a show on HBO uh, last we week. Did? Uh, we did. Oh, we yeah. had. Were uh, you there? That was. 
<laughs> you didn't come to the you didn't come to the finale party? Oh man. <laughs> I, HBO well, did a show. I, my life is just a sequence of blown opportunity. Yeah. HBO did a show for us. Uh, it was written by David Simon, who wrote what is universally agreed as the the greatest show, I, I guess the greatest thing in history, The Wire. Simon, Simon and Simon. Uh, exactly. And uh, directed by Paul Haggis, uh, director of the film that's universally degreed, agreed was is uh, the worst movie ever to win an Oscar, Crash. Uh, it was called uh, Show Me Your Hero. Uh, and it starred... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> starred uh, Oscar, Oscar Isaac. Oscar, Oscar Isaac. Star Wars' is Oscar Isaacs. And uh, and uh, we watched it. What and 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 uh, and what do we think? We, do we love it? Well, I watched it. I I, I, I um no, <laughs> no. I I mean you'd have to you know there were some nice subtle scenes and all that you know and some some subtleties. But but it's you know it's six and a half hours about housing desegregation in Yonkers. You know that, that is the ultimate in take your medicine TV watching, right? Um, it was like it was, you know. I used to write for an alternative newspaper, uh, yeah. newspaper, and it just felt like one of those articles that goes on, you know, twenty thousand, <laughs> forty thousand words, three parts, four parts, and um, you know, I, I, it, it felt very nutritious, but not very, not very filling. I, I, I don't. There that's... was uh, the show was set to the songs of uh, 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 Mr. Bruce Springsteen. Entirely. And not uh, entirely. When they went to the black characters, there was some hip hop. Oh. <laughs> But they did. They did not less than uh, one montage per episode set to a, a, a song. A, yeah. a song was the Simon what, montage. What do you think they were trying to say by using the music, Bruce Springsteen? What do you, what do you suppose the message was there? The American dream. I just is, don't know. Is the so, American dream um, is hard to achieve. Uh, the wall sconces when he was putting up the wall sconce to yeah, the Springsteen. That was the one. That was the one. He was rehabbing uh, his house. The. Uh, this what Stacy. You didn't see the show. No, uh, I, I turned off my Direct TV, and I didn't know there was a David Simon show. I probably would have watched it if I. I would have watched it, for sure. The, uh, and uh, but you guys kind of have to get some of the relevant points. Give, given that, uh, it, given ended, that it, it ended with. Can I give away the ending? Is it okay? Uh, yeah. So uh, just a, a blanket warning here. Uh, every episode of this will be filled with spoilers Massive of everything, spoilers. Yeah. and we're, we're not going to warn you about any of it, so if you don't want anything, if there's anything that in the world that you don't want spoiled yeah. for you, uh, Stay away. If, if I find out during the course of this podcast that's, that Darth Vader is not Luke Skywalker's father, I am going to tell you, and I'm not going to warn you that I'm about to tell you. So I would expect you to tell me that. Yeah, so just... Uh, Hey, I just got a message. Turns out Darth Vader is not Luke Skywalker's father. <laughs> uh, well, what wow. do you know? Breaking well, yeah. news. All right. So anyway, so the, the the idea is that this is the a show about the uh, about about the attempt to de desegregate public housing in Yonkers in the 80s and 90s. It spans a lot of years, and um, Oscar Isaac plays this young mayor who's thrust into the position of of be, being forced to push all this legislation through despite opposition um, from a lot of badly wigged uh, white actors, I would say. Especially Catherine Keener's wig was, was especially... Why did she have to wear a wig for this? I don't, I don't know. Was too cool? No, I just... It, it was a really... She just had to look a little frumpier than usual, I think. And her, her, that her could was, easily be achieved without a wig. It uh, seemed like a, it was a wig. There was no. It could, I mean, she could have grown her hair out and made it and and, and placed like a like a um, a bowl over it and then spun it around a few. Was times. Jim Belushi? Jim Belushi was playing. Jim Belushi's in it. He was not Jim wearing. Jim Belushi's it. in it. Yeah, it was uh, pretty good too. He was pretty good. Pretty effective. No, that was the best. Jim Belushi. Playing, was playing, he's perfect. playing a fat Italian guy. Exactly. That which a fat Italian mayor. What? Do you, that's that's all you want, Jim. Belushi. That was that. That was good. Did stuff. he have a cigar? Yeah, there was a lot of cigars in the show, actually. A lot of cigar yeah. smoking. So that was good. Um, but but so so this guy like basic and, and then and then but he gradually declines over the course of the show and gets caught up in all this petty political corruption and then ha has some sort of nervous breakdown that I didn't quite understand. And then like shoots himself while sitting on his father's grave. It was very subtle. <laughs> That's convenient though. I laugh at the, I laugh at the shooting himself while sitting on his grave. Uh, I mean, and, and he, we he's see only him, thinking ahead. 
being the ghost of his dead father, I'm like, you know, just stop. There was a ghost of a dead father in the show? There was a ghost. It was like, it, it was so like, that plus Jim Belushi, I don't, like, I'm like sort of Polish glad I didn't watch it. Polish <laughs> Hamlet, really. Yeah. The, and, and then the housing was desegregated, and you had lots of kind of long, boring scenes of poor people sitting around their kitchen tables being, I mean, I hate to say it, because obviously you want the people to have nice houses and to be happy, but those scenes were kind of boring, weren't they, Richard? Uh, they got their stuff. houses, and uh, one of them had a deadbeat boyfriend stay in, stay there that almost got her kicked out. A deadbeat boyfriend, and that's a bad. Yeah. That was like James Dean. That was like James Dean, but like put through several, like that Michael Keaton movie where he copies himself over and over again. It was like yeah. the twentieth copy of James Dean for that yeah. boyfriend. And the and the rest of them uh, said, "Okay, I, I got a I got a condo now." I, yeah. I, was like, I, look, I looked at those houses and I was like, the yards are a little small. Uh, and then, the, but the, but there was they, they were across the street from they, they there was the uh, the house no stainless projects, appliances, no stainless there, appliances. The angry white people across the street that didn't talk to them until one day uh, one of the children uh, asked, the, this, asked the, the angry poodle. lady if she if she could if he could pet the poodle, and on the twentieth time he asked, she said yes. And then everything was okay in the projects. And then the races were healed. The race yeah. divide in America was healed, except for the one, the, the guy who, who committed suicide on the grave of his dead father after he may or may not have cheated on his wife and committed an act of egregious political corruption. See that that was the that was the, that was a good story, but oh wait wait wait, wait. We're, we're forgetting the whole thing. We're forget the 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 the, uh, the problem of this was that. Uh, Winona Ryder was a city council president. Oh, no. And, and that you, was not... You, and let that was that, not you let that till now? Bury the lead. That, that's as the show did. It was that you that you cast you cast Winona Ryder as a city council president, and you think anybody wants to see anything else going on in your no. show. No, yeah. Other yeah, than, it's true, because she, she, she threw a lot of crazy eye. Oh, she was uh, the best city council president. <laughs> I mean, that this is what you want in a city council. You want Marona Wright. I mean, it was it was her greatest performance in thirty years. I uh, it was, I I didn't I I didn't realize it was Definitely. her until the the second episode. I was so, really. I was what, so. What, I was just, what, what, how how did you not wreck? Does she look that different? No, because you you don't expect you because you, she. You did not acting. expect a city acting. council president she to be really a Marona Ryder. She really embodied the city council president. So last thing you expect from a city council president for them to turn out to be Winona yeah. Ryder. Really, I yeah. want to see a spin-off show where she her name was Vinny, like Vincenza or something, and I want to see just like six episodes of Vinny trying to make it in the big city. Because you didn't really see anything about her personal life. You know that would be that would have been a better show. The I big think. city of Yonkers, or she yeah, moves yeah. to or the big city. To, she could go to New York. She could move to New York when she loses her presidency and tries to make it maybe in publishing or something. Yeah, or yeah. Like or a magazine. She could work for a magazine. Or she can run for governor. Well, that's just yeah, that's a good idea. Or maybe I she. Think can she go, should stay in Yonkers and try to make Yonkers better. Maybe she could go join Spin City also and work huh? with Michael J. Fox there <laughs> in the in, in that office. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, so to sum up on uh, show, show me a hero. Uh, uh, Stacy, thumbs up or thumbs down? Uh, thumbs uh, down. Not, not having seen it, thumbs not down. Not having seen it, thumbs down. Uh, uh, Neil Pol author Neil Pollock. Well, I'm gonna say you know like asparagus or broccoli or any other leaf green vegetable it, it I should say thumbs up because it, it is edifying but but I didn't really enjoy it so I'm, I'm gonna go thumbs down on that yeah um, and I will say uh, you know I I, I I you know you know me you know I want to dislike it you know I I, I, I didn't come here to be the nice guy uh, the the foil to your cynicism I'm with you in spirit but Jim Belushi is the mayor, and Winona Ryder is city council president. I mean, uh, that that may have only been thirty minutes of this of this nine hour show. But, uh, I'm just gonna say this: there are two separate scenes where the same family is reunited in the same airport at the same gate in different episodes. What happened to the guy with Spring diabetes? Music. What, Spring what, what, music. what so happened? To the, not, not acceptable. What happened to the asthma guy at the? Beginning? Oh, he died. It was oh, implied. 
A lot of stuff yeah. that, that happens, that, yeah, and you just have to read it. You have to like just really listen to the subtle mumble dialogue. And he died. The asthma I completely guy. missed that. The, uh, the which asthma. is why, which is why the the his his the, the lady who he got pregnant became a junkie and then moved into the nice townhouses later. Oh yeah, well, that was nice. Uh, follow oh, the, oh, follow the thread. Yeah, I. <laughs> you know, there was that. There was some. I, I was on the, the the thing about this show is it came on as I was on level three hundred ninety six of Candy Crush, and I, uh, I spent uh, I spent I spent the entire I, I spent the entire show um watching it while also playing video poker. So yeah. Yeah. So it, 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 right, bad, right. Bad timing on HBO's part to <laughs> schedule the show while that was on. It didn't rivet me like Ballers did. Yeah. Uh, so episode, so issue two here, issue three, if you count uh, our medical appointments. I do. Um, so issue three, then technically, uh, there's a there 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 is a new uh, there's a new curse cursing the land, uh, and it is called cartoon stunt casting. Uh, author Neil Pollock, do you want to do you, do you want to speak to this? Uh, yeah, I was rant. And we, I, I'm the one who put this one on the table, so I guess yeah. I kind of have to. But I I, I, I watched, for instance, um, the, the whole second season of BoJack Horseman on Netflix. And and I also I watch a lot of all the animated shows, both because um, I have nothing else to do and because um, I, have a, I have a 12-year-old son. And I just noticed that every... Every they all contain the voices of everyone. Every comedy player of ev of ev at every level seems to be on these cartoons, and I'm like, is this the end game to be sort of on a to, to participate in some sort of hipster Scooby Doo game? Like, oh, I'm going to do Bo BoJack this week, and you know, especially when those voices aren't necessarily used to great effect, they're just kind of like everything's kind of this monotone, and it could be any person. And I think that there are just a lot of actors and. Who could do the job just as well and be grateful for for, for the gig? And yeah, it yeah, but it's just an opportunity to Instagram because if you go in and you do one day or you know half a day, you say three lines on some cartoon show, then you can promote it heavily on every stream of media that you have at your disposal. I understand you can, that you can take pictures of yourself, but. <laughs> And but I mean it's but that's what you know. That's what I used it's to about. Think that unfamous actors should just do these parts. Yes, yes. That's why watched, they're unfamous because they don't get in there and and. No, when I watched cartoons, I didn't know when, when I was a kid. They we didn't know who the actors were. It wasn't like no. it was it wasn't like Charles Nelson Riley playing Fred on Scooby or someone well, else. That would have been great. That would have been great. It would have been better. But why does that make sense? The only voice we knew was Casey Kasem. Because he was on the radio every and week. And Wolfman Jack. Who was Wolfman? Okay. Oh, just in general. And you're right, but I'm just saying, Wolf, but I'm, <laughs> we knew Wolfman Jack's voice, but he wasn't on the Smurfs or something, which would have been better. But um, Gary Olson also. Yeah, Gary Olson. Okay, that. okay. There yeah, were, we knew a lot of people's those voices. Those were voice guys. Those were voice guys. Instead, you've got like, oh, look, it's J.K. Simmons playing a, a, a cartoon kangaroo. Yeah. Why? Well, it's, Why? It's, he's an Oscar winner. He won the Oscar. Why is he on BoJack Horseman? I don't. Because he's a homer. Because he wants to. They want to get as many famous people as they can, and as many and famous people want to get as much attention and likes as they can. So they do everything. I just. I. I just. I. I. I want to return. I'm a crank. I want to return yeah. to anonymous cartoon voices. Uh, but it's not just cartoons, if I may say so. It is uh, if you watch the sitcoms of our time, which I do, yeah. Why um, would I do that? Every it's goddamn. Testing. Every, yeah, he's the editor of an entertainment website. He has to watch the sitcoms. This, this is this. Is, I I get paid per per sitcom episode uh, that that I watch here. They, That's not a bad uh, deal, then. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> All right. So anyway, make your point. You're watching. They, the they, uh, every single car, it, there. There's not a there. Every single time uh, they go into, they they have their uh, their their brother-in-law come to visit. It will either be Anders from Workaholics or Key or Peel uh, or uh, or Ed Helms or Rain Wilson. Uh, yeah, the, the, the next Ed Helms cameo I see, I hope is the, is the last Ed Helms cameo. It's it's I, I, I the cameos. 
I was watching the show, the the, the FX show uh, Married this the, this uh, last week. As if mar- being married isn't enough. We have to watch it. <laughs> yeah, we uh, double down. But they 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 introduced the idea that 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 the uh, Nat Faxon's mother is coming to visit, and they they introduced it a few scenes before she arrived. And I found myself just wondering, like, which uh, actress are they are they going to cast as as the mother? Because it's always going to be somebody. And I was shocked when uh, the mother walks in, and it's just uh, it's just someone you don't know and haven't heard of playing someone? playing the mother. I approve. Not- I approve. Yeah, I, I'm I'm all for not famous people get, getting more work, but because you can't do cameos anymore because they're all cameos. Well, it's not, it's no longer about the it's no longer yeah. about the show. It's about uh, it's it's about look we the, look, look who we got. As, as, look as, who was yeah in, in this part, and it's uh, and she was just playing the role of Nat Faxon's mother in this episode. Right. The and, new, and, and the new thing is going to be not to be famous. The, I say it here first. The new way of being famous, and I'm starting it here right now, is yeah. by actively the, trying to avoid fame. I'm gonna so cash in on that. that. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sticking to the old way. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna cling YouTube? to it. You're I'm just gonna, gonna get as many YouTube followers as you can. I'm gonna cling to it. But I uh, I uh, yeah. But it is like if you look at for instance like a show like Brooklyn Nine Nine, which is pretty much like entirely like good looking people not really being cops, and then entirely a, a universe of just of wacky guest stars. Yeah, that, that that to me, I think Brooklyn Nine Nine is the is the ultimate of this kind of show, wouldn't you say? Well, if I if I can offer a counter argument, we all of course uh, we all of course love uh, the Love Boat and Fantasy Island. Of course, which, right? Which, but the whole point of that show, but that, was, yeah, that was the whole point of those shows was to have celebrity guests come on and see their stories. There would be right. no show if it was just it was just Julie and you know Gopher. That'd be a whole different show that only we would watch. Right, because it's like not Brooklyn Nine Nine isn't like who will be the guest criminal this week, starring guest criminal. If they did that, yeah. if they had like a little bubble with guest criminal Craig Robinson, <laughs> you know, I, I, I would be. I think all, it's going to be Bill Bixby this week. <laughs> I would be all over it. Uh, quick, quick lightning round here. Everybody's okay. favorite love boat, love boat guest. Oh, I have Paul one. Williams. Go ahead, go ahead. I interrupted you. Paul Williams. Paul Williams. Paul, oh, that's it. I mean, there was one where uh, there was an episode I remember it made an imprint where Donald O'Connor was the guest with the trained seal, and Donald it was Donald O'Connor performing with the seal. You that just that's inconceivable on television now. He's what about Dick? Sh- what about the one with Dick Sean where she where he pours that milkshake on his head to get the lady's attention? The uh, what, what about? I, I'm going to change mine to Dick Sean. Do you recall the uh, Do you recall the Scatman Crothers episode? No. What happens on that one? So Scatman Crothers, uh, it's it it uh, he he comes on and he's he's doing the uh, he's doing the uh, remember he's doing the hand jive. That's his oh. big He wows the yeah. ship the ship with his hand jive. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> Isaac has fallen in love with a professor at that time. Uh, Played by Lola Falana. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, and 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 they are appalled by these these Uncle Tom antics of of uh, of of uh, right. of, 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 of Scott and Crothers doing the hand drive for everyone yeah. all over the ship. And they and they shun him and make him an outcast and make his entire his. His entire uh, cruise about board, for instance, is a living hell thanks to uh, Isaac and his uh, and his professor girlfriend. And his black yeah. nationalist professor girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> until the, Davis. And the, until I, the, I remember. No, I remember this one now. And yeah. The, okay. the final scene, uh, Professor or Captain Stooping comes out and says, "Well, you 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 all, uh, you think you're so smart. Uh, this." This uh, hand driver here mm-hmm. was was a starting picture in the the Negro Leagues, and because <laughs> of it, and, and 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 he was one of the great pioneers, uh, and and thanks to him today, uh, black the, people are, are free black people can baseball. be can be baseball players or doctors, <laughs> and and his, and Isaac's girlfriend says or professors, and and Isaac and then Isaac says or bartenders. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
Well, yeah, and you know, why isn't TV... Wait a minute. Nobody said he should say bartenders and then she should say professors. Yeah, exactly. Bartenders should have come way at the beginning. Yeah, or bartenders. Yeah. Oh, that is fantastic. This is what it's going to be. This is what it's going to be like in the nursing home. Just yeah. Yeah, I know. old Jews I talking know. about the love boat. About, coming. about, um, stuff, I, about Welcome Back, Cotter. Remember that if, one? Yeah. If I can direct it, I, and I, I, I interviewed... Uh, as a matter of fact, I have it right here. On the publication of this book, <laughs> uh, I I interviewed uh, Gavin McLeod, who's uh, who's the, the uh, who's, who's you know he's found he's found right, God now. He's a religious man, and uh, which religion? And I, which religion? He's he's found Jesus. Okay, he's, that's good. He's, McLeod is the not, religion. Uh, yeah, is not uh, not a Jewish name, I'm afraid. But uh, he. Uh, so I, I asked him, I said, so all through the book, it's like, this person was, this person who had the best experience. They came on the love boat, they were wonderful. And when they came, and everyone on Mary Tyler Moore was so great. And so I, I said to him, uh, this is an interesting memoir because you, you don't say one negative word about, <laughs> about, in 40 years of Hollywood, you don't say one negative word about anyone you work with. And he said, because everyone was wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you I wish I wish that I could feel that way about my own life. I really do. I wish yeah. that I could say everyone was wonderful, but it's not the case. Uh, you 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 need to walk a mile in Captain Stubing's uh, uh, hat there. Uh, yeah, Captain uh, Jubing. Available, available right now. Captain Jubing. Um, but you see, yeah, yeah, yeah. Final topic. Uh, so we, we 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 like to conclude this word this uh, this podcast with a. Uh, with a segment we call uh, it's not so bad uh, where where one of us uh, defends something says something is actually good and uh, and the other two put put that person in in their place for it uh, and this time I'm I, I've elected to 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 go first at bat here I, I volunteered and uh, I'm gonna throw it out there uh, I saw a little film this this uh, summer called. Mission Impossible: Rogue Nation, and uh, I, you know what? I had the time of my life. Uh, solid, solid adventure. A little long, maybe. Uh, the, the 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 mystery uh, mystery could have could have been been tightened there, but uh, you look at that Mission Impossible series. Six films now, uh, only one clunker, uh, and not flashy. But that Tom Cruise, he uh, he, uh, as they say, he he delivers the goods. Yeah, he does. Uh, he brings them. He brings yeah, the goods, he, and he, he doesn't he doesn't uh, throw doesn't throw them all over the room. He puts them down nicely on your doorstep, and, where you would uh, want them, mm -hmm. in in their bag, and, uh, and no, look, I mean, yes, he does his own stunts. He does, and and he's he's, he's that's he, not why he's great though. That he's, that's the I, only thing I find acceptable. He first of all, he's the leader of, of an evil religion. And he is he has one facial expression. Who cares? I, I care. How I many, mean, I like my how many do you need? How many do you need? Seven? Maybe seven. Five five to <laughs> you seven. Really take, you really take you really Where's the way I work with like three? Like, that's I, a, I, that's I, a, I don't find him. I don't find him appealing, and I, I, I don't believe him at the center of it. And also with the Mission Impossible movies, I gotta say, like, enough with the sort of shadow organization that's just a mirror image of the real organization being a threat to the real organization when neither or it, it, I, every movie has that plot there's always a shadow organization that is exactly the same there's like a, a good robot and an evil robot and they have to fight it's the same thing and Tom Cruise uh, is, is both is, is kind of an evil robot I, the, I think. The, the here's how you know sorry okay I just can I just explain why Tom Cruise is a good actor yes Frank T.J. Mackey no, I hate that. Oh, that was awful. When you see Tom Cruise on, let's say, a talk show, he's a, he's a terrible person, which just proves what a great actor he is. Because when you see him on some jumping up and on the couch, talking his weird stuff and those Scientology things, when you try to imagine what you know the audition process for his wife is like and all that stuff, how is it still possible that you can watch? Rain Man, any of those Mission Impossible movies, Tropic Thunder, where he's actually being self-aware and funny. He can. It's only because he is a good actor that he can make you forget what how what an actual creep he actually is. Yeah, and I gotta say that's like, a talent. In it's, this, 
in this age, there's something impressive, uh, if not honorable, but impressive about in this day when everybody tends to their brand so carefully and there's yeah. so much the, they, they're, they're, they're doing the tweets and they look after everything and they, they, they got so much their, their tie-ins and their what have you. And their posts. This guy has had things between the Katie Holmes debacle from start to finish and yeah. the the dis and the final unveiling of Scientology that when he's at front of I mean he's had nuclear missiles thrown yeah. in his career that like that that I mean how many you know one tenth of this would have buried a Channing Tatum or totally yeah. so or so a, we're and, we're supposed to respect Ben Affleck him. we're supposed yeah. to respect to him because he he he's the head of an evil religion and can afford the best publicist money can buy <laughs> but it, it's not that way he has terrible publicists that's my point it's it's he's he's been a public relations disaster for for 15 years here on a magnitude that no other star has has, has experienced and. He, he stumbles from one catastrophe to another, yeah. and yet keeps making. Uh, and he doesn't put any sweat on it. the floor. I will say that Edge of Tomorrow thing he did with Emily Blunt, where they he gets reborn over and over again, and they're fighting uh, the aliens. That's that was, a good was, movie. That was very good. Very that was good, a good movie. And but it was, but it wasn't because of him. He was. He, it was absolutely because of no, him. No, it was because of her. No, and it was despite her. I liked her better. Five minutes into that, you're you're not even thinking about you're giving money to to a religion that enslaves people. You don't I, even, I you, forget. You, don't even, you don't even care that. That, that was the Once only. Once you start sweating out those toxins, that was forget. that was the only movie in, in in the last thirty years where I was able to put all that crap behind me and just enjoy it. But it was you know there were I, it was, but it was a kind I mean, of an, it was a good script. What about that movie where he drives around and Jamie Foxx drives him around? And he's a meanie. He was good in that. Oh, I don't remember. Yeah, I know it's what you're talking about. It's he's he's he, go watch that, Neil. Watch that this week. Well, you tell me what if you give you uh give if you can think of the title. It's, and, a, it's uh, something with a C. Google. It's called like corruption or something. I suppose that's I like ten years Jamie ago. Fo Jamie Foxx drives Tom Cruise around, and and I'll find something. I'll, and just yeah. a, just a reality check here. Have you tried to uh, rid yourself of negative thetans? Yeah. Have you? Yeah, that's why that's why I'm going to the doctor today. You might be happier. It works. I might be. That's why that's that's why the program is successful because it that works. That might be. I, I, I have I have yoga for that. We wouldn't be talking about it if it didn't work. Yep. Yeah. Uh, you no. Know, if you wanted to spend money on yoga, when you could, how much do you spend on yoga? You could put like that much down at auditing. I spend eighteen dollars a month. A million. Okay, for eighteen dollars a month, you could get like three hours of auditing. They worked out a payment plan for you. You'll never knew. <laughs> take more than you can afford to pay. It's, it's like yeah, there's convenient payment plans. Most people qualify. No, I can. I will continue to dissent on Tom Cruise, and you all, you all can worship at the temple of of, of the most of Hollywood's most golden god. And, and yeah. so we, and so we will. Uh, and, and we, we will. are, and we are out of time on this. It's it's not premiere. This pre premiere. Uh, out of town tryout beta episode of the cranks. Uh, yeah, it wasn't I, so bad. It wasn't so yeah, bad. Yeah, I don't know. Wait, it's, we're, we're okay. It's um, we survived it. I'll 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 do it again. I'll do it again. Yeah, man, you sent me this nice microphone. I want to use it. Yeah. Yeah. We got. I mean, this. I I don't know another another podcast out there that has three authors. Uh, no. Yeah. Uh, uh, cool. uh, with filled with hate. Yeah. Where are you gonna find that? Where are you gonna find that? Uh, yeah, and Stacy even has books behind her. Yeah, uh, look, I, you know. I, I have books. <laughs> to myself. Yeah, I, well. I showed you my book, so uh. yeah, that's the book. <laughs> that's I, do like, book. I do like that, though, Richard. I think I think the prop, the having the handy, the handy, the <laughs> handy ironic prop, is it, it, it's going to have to. Sometimes. Uh, uh, so thank you, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Uh, People at oh, home, wait, if wait, you're, if you're still listening. Do we get to talk about J Jason Siegel as David Foster Wallace? Can we do that next week? Yes, we can. That's a I'm, good actually, try. I'm actually going to see it this weekend. So I can't I'm not going to. Okay. How do you, you go what to if I don't get to see it? Oh, I know. You don't you see it. it doesn't mean you can't have opinions. Okay. Just read yeah. about it. Read, look at some. There's some clips. I think the bandana looks great. <laughs> next <laughs> week. That's, 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 that's a valid opinion. Okay. That's coming next week, though. That's good. All right. Uh, Humor. Uh, and so we'll we'll see you all there. <laughs>